Ever wonder why researchers don't just talk to every single person or measure every single item when they need answers? Do the words population and sample leave you scratching your head? Stick around because understanding the difference is the key to running smart, efficient studies. I'm Raid with Jotform, and in this video, we will discuss what researchers mean when they say population and sample, why you often need one instead of the other, and how to gather reliable data either way. We'll also look at common sampling techniques, what a sampling error is, and how Jotform can simplify the whole process. Let's jump right in. Picture the everyday meaning of population. You might think about the number of people living in a city. In research though, population has a much sharper focus. It is any well-defined collection of people or items that share a characteristic a researcher cares about. Arvind Sharma, an assistant professor at Boston College, puts it plainly, a population can be any unit from which you collect data not just humans. That means a research population might be soccer matches, insects, or phone models on the market. Basically, anything you can group by a common trait you want to study. A sample is a slice of that bigger group, a carefully chosen subset that represents the whole. By definition, it is smaller than the population, yet if you pick it well, it mirrors the larger group closely enough to draw reliable conclusions. Now, how exactly do populations and samples differ? The first comparison is the amount of people. The population is the entire set of your research targets, while the sample is a smaller unit drawn from that set. Second, let's compare the size. Populations are typically large, sometimes dauntingly, whereas samples are more manageable. The third comparison is practicality. Collecting data from very large populations is often impractical or even impossible, yet gathering information from a sample is usually realistic. Finally, let's consider the cost. A census which surveys every member captures population level data, but it can be quite costly. A survey can grab what you need from a sample more cheaply and quickly. In short, Population studies cost more, take longer, and chew through more resources, while sampling is the budget-friendly, time-smart alternative. That begs the next question. Why sample in the first place? According to Sharma, it boils down to three big realities, cost, practicality, and manageability. First comes cost. Imagine the price tag on a nationwide census of every adult male in America that bill would be astronomical. Narrowing your scope to a well-chosen sample slashes expenses dramatically without gutting accuracy. Next is practicality. Even if money were no object, physically reaching and convincing an entire population to participate is a tall order to ask. Some members are remote, unresponsive, or simply impossible to contact. With a sample, you trim that challenge down to size. Last is manageability. Research is not only about collecting data. You have to store it, organize it, and crunch the numbers later. A data set on 1,000 adult males is far easier to wrangle than a data set on every single adult male in the United States, or even within a single state. Fewer rows in your spreadsheet mean fewer headaches during analysis. Occasionally, the population really is small enough to survey everyone. So when you decide to sample, how do you pick individuals or items? Researchers rely on several classic methods, and we will discuss the big three, including simple random sampling, systematic sampling, and stratified sampling. Simple random sampling is straightforward. Everyone in the population has an equal shot at selection. If you are selecting 50 employees from a workforce of 500, you might drop every name into a hat and draw 50 slips. As long as the pool is not massive, this lottery style approach guarantees fairness and is easy to explain later when someone asks how you built your sample. Systematic sampling adds a little structure. Instead of pure luck of the draw, you select every fifth item on a list. For example, 
Say you have a roster of 1,000 customer service reps and decide to survey every fifth person. You could grab the fifth, 10th, 15th, and so on until you collect the desired number of participants. Stratified sampling takes representation seriously. You break the population into layers or strata based on attributes like age, race, gender, or department. Then you randomly pick members from each layer. The goal is to guarantee each subgroup gets a voice. If you are studying employees at a multinational firm, you might separate them by region or job tier first, then sample within each bracket so no group is overlooked. Whichever method you choose, sampling errors are a possibility. That is the gap between what your sample tells you and what the entire population's true value would be. If your sample skews too small or the people you pick do not mirror the larger population, your conclusions can drift off target. There are two main ways to shrink your sampling error. First, increase your sample size. More data points generally nudge your estimate closer to the truth. Second, design your sample well. Good methodology paired with awareness of how diverse the population is, that is, population variation, helps keep errors in check. Whether you choose to question a massive population, a slim sample, or even run a limited census on a tiny group, JotForm makes the mechanics painless. With our free online survey maker, you can create engaging forms fast, share them digitally, and watch responses roll in on any device. The platform offers more than 10,000 survey templates you can tweak to fit your exact research goals. Adjust colors, add logic, set validation rules, and embed the form wherever your participants will see it. Then keep tabs on the incoming data through built-in analytics or download everything for deeper number crunching in your favorite software. In short, the heavy lifting fades away so you can focus on drawing insights instead of wrestling with paperwork. Thanks for watching. I'm Raid with JotForm. Click that subscribe button so you never miss tips on smarter data collection. Take care and I'll see you in the next video.